Hello, welcome back to John's Fiddle Lessons at BluegrassDaddy.com. I have the camera at a strange angle because I want to talk about a strange phenomenon. And this is one that a friend pointed out to me. And uh, here's some, sort of how it works. I'll set it up. So when you're playing the bow perpendicular to the strings, it pretty much goes straight perpendicular. However, watch what happens when I tilt the bow with respect to the strings and play it. See that? The bow gets pulled toward the bridge. On an up bow, on a down bow, it gets pushed away from the bridge. And watch when I turn the bow around so that it's angled in the opposite direction. Now a down bow gets pulled toward the bridge. And an up bow gets pushed away from the bridge. And so one might ask, what is this strange force that's causing the, causing the bow to be pulled toward the bridge when it's at an angle or away from the bridge, depending on the direction of motion? Well, as it turns out, the bow is not being pulled toward the bridge or away from the bridge. And, um, and let, me, let me explain what's going on. When the, you apply pressure to the strings, the bow hairs stick to the strings. And so that sticky surface, which is facilitated by the rosin that's on the hairs of the bow, makes contact with the strings, they actually stick to the string and do not slide at all. And so let's say we're making an up bow. And so we push, we push this bow up this way. It's sticking to the string, so the string and the bow hair are not moving with respect to each other. They're stuck together. And it moves upward. And in the meanwhile, there's this sort of a kink that goes around and snaps back. And um, as the bow, as the string, you know, is, is vibrating back and forth. And so, first of all, let's talk about the direction the string vibrates. The string is fixed here at the bridge and there at the nut. It's, it cannot vibrate this direction. It can only vibrate this way. And so, its direction of maximum vibration is up and down, up and down, from F hole to F hole, like this. It cannot move this direction. So when that bow is stuck to the string, the bow can only move in the direction of the string's vibration, which is up or down in a perpendicular way. Now, so here's what happens. The bow and the string move along together for 90% of the time. For that last 10%, the, the string snaps. Let's say we're doing an up bow. So the bow, bow moves up with the string for 90% of the time, and then for 10% of the time, the string snaps back down at a much greater speed, grips the bow again, and begins to move upward more slowly for another 90%. So nine parts out of 10, the bow is sticking to the string without moving with respect to the string, and for one part out of 10, the string is snapping back. So as the bow moves up perpendicular to the string direction, um, its own momentum carries it in the direction it was going for that 10% of the time. And so the very vibration and direction of the string forces the bow to move perpendicular to the string. And so you might ask, well, what's happening here when I angle it? And can you see it's, uh, it's pulling toward, toward the bridge? How can it be pulling toward the bridge if at 90% of the time it has to be moving in a way that's perpendicular? Well, watch this. I've got a piece of tape on this bow. And so you can see that even though the bow seems to be moving toward the bridge, that piece of tape moves in a perpendicular way with the string. Watch it one more time. Now back down. The tape is moving perpendicular to the string. That's because, first of all, the string doesn't really know that the bow is angled. All it knows is there's a big sticky surface over top of it and it's going to travel along with that surface and then slip and travel along with that surface. It doesn't care what the orientation of the hairs on the bow are. It doesn't even know. All it, all it knows is the sticky rosiny surface. And so um, by angling the bow, the only way the string can tell something has changed is now there's a, there's a larger surface in contact with it because now you're at an angle. So the, the, bow, the string doesn't care what the way the bow direction is. And so what happens then, as the bow moves 
up this way and I'll, I'll, I'll move it without even touching the string. You see as I move the bow up that way, when it's at an angle, it appears to be moving to the left toward the bridge. But it's not. I'm moving this bow perpendicular. I'm moving this bow perpendicular to the, it's kind of hard to do, per perpendicular to the strings and it only, it only appears in an illusionary fashion to be moving toward the bridge. Well, that's hard to do. It's much easier to do it while you're playing it because then you're forced to move perpendicular. So that is the grand illusion that makes it seem like the bow is being dragged toward the bridge or away from the bridge when it's at some angle, but it's not. The bow, and if, and if you just bring it down to that tiny area that's contacting the string itself, okay, and so that string is, here's the string, I'm holding it in my hand, it's a big cable like on the on the San Francisco Bridge. Um, it's moving forward, it's rolling this way because there's a torsional effect, and it's dragging that bow right along with it, and then it snaps back and it does it again. And it's rolling that and pulling that bow. Um, actually, the effect is the bow is rolling and pushing it, but in other words, it, it must go perpendicular to the string because it cannot move left or right. It's fixed at the bridge and the nut and can't go laterally. Your bow moves along perpendicular and then it keeps going. Just like that. 90% of the time it's stuck to the string. So that's our, that's our illusion of the day. Why the bow appears to be moving away from or toward the bridge when, um, when you draw it across the strings at an angle. So I hope you enjoyed that.